Hello and welcome to MF Corner. I'm Sonal Bhutra in the Mumbai studio. Well, before we talk about the topic of the day, let's start the show with some important development in an effort to boost innovation and competition in the mutual fund industry. The Securities and Exchange Board of India has also proposed new regulations aimed at simplifying entry and reducing compliance for AMCs managing passive mutual funds and ETFs. The regulations called MF Lite also aim to ease net worth requirements for passive fund houses. My colleague Shivani is here with all those details. Shivani. Well, SEBI has introduced a consultation paper for MF Lite, a streamlined version of the mutual fund regulations designed specifically for fund houses focusing on passive schemes. The goal is to attract more entrants by lowering the net worth and profit track record requirements. Now, what does the consultation paper say? It suggests relaxed financial criteria wherein sponsors would need a minimum profit of 5 crore rupees in three years of the last five years down from current 10 crore each year. The minimum net worth of AMCs would drop from 50 crore to 35 crore initially and then eventually to 25 crore after five consecutive profitable years. Additionally, passive-only AMCs could conduct up to 10% of their transactions through associated brokers up from the current 5% limit. The experience requirement for the top executives has also been relaxed. It would be reduced from 30 years to 20 years. Interesting part is that SEBI has also proposed a new variety of schemes called the hybrid passive funds. Three sets of hybrid passive funds uh, with varying equity to debt ratios like debt oriented, balanced and equity oriented have been proposed in the consultation paper. Currently, passive funds uh, mimic the existing either pure equity or pure debt indices. Now, remember these MF flight regulations are for AMCs with passive schemes only, but most AMCs in the Indian mutual fund industry have both active as well as passive funds. However, SEBI has proposed that existing fund houses can segregate their passive businesses into separate entities, ensuring complete segregation of resources for passive fund management. All in all, SEBI has proposed to make passive uh, fund management easier and more accessible. Back to you. Shivani, thank you so much for bringing us those important details. Of course, after the feedback, there could be some finality. Right now, it's just a consultation paper. But let's move on. Now, we are going to throw the spotlight on momentum investing. For our viewers, momentum investing is a method of choosing stocks on the basis of price movement. But yes, we need to understand more about it. Which are the stocks here that uh, the AMCs focus on? What do the fund managers think about this entire strategy? Should the viewers go for the momentum investing? Is it for new investors? And is it a short-term or a long-term uh, strategy? To discuss this and more, we have with us Kavita Menon, founder at Probitus Wealth, and Abhishek Kumar, founder and SEBI RIA at Sehaj Mani. Uh, thank you so much, Kavita and Abhishek, for joining us today. And we've been seeing a lot of conversations around momentum investing and also a lot of momentum stocks in general. Kavita, let me start with you. What is momentum investing when it comes to mutual funds? If you can explain it in simpler terms for our viewers. Sure. So momentum, like the word suggests, you know, it's like a pendulum. Let's let's think of price as a pendulum. So momentum strategy believes that if a price momentum is gathered in a in a particular uh, asset, uh, it will continue for some time in the same trajectory. For example, if it is a positive price movement and it has been positively rising for a certain amount of time, then such price momentum will continue for a longer period of time. Similarly, on the downside, if the prices are going into a negative momentum, the negative momentum will be sustained for a period of time. Momentum strategy aims to take advantage of this continuous price movements, uh, capture them and provide alpha over and above the index strategy, a plain vanilla index strategy. This is what is momentum. It is a factor investment. It is a smart beta style of investment. It is also called strategy index is also a word that we use for momentum investing. Okay, all right. Take that point, Kavita. Thank you for that uh, explanation. Abhishek, uh, coming to you, um, you know, we understand the basic here, but is are there a lot of funds here? Uh, do we have a lot of options to choose from when it comes to momentum investing? So thanks for having me, uh, Punal and team here. Uh, with regard to uh, funds to pick from this space, uh, there are essentially 17 odd funds right now, out of which only two funds are in active space, uh, namely Samco, and then there is one from uh, Quant, uh, AMC as well. Rest of the 15 funds are uh, passive funds, and it's a mixed bag of both index fund and ETFs. So these are the uh, funds option that one can pick for uh, if they're looking for uh, I mean, momentum investing through mutual funds. 
So that is what uh, this availability uh, in terms of uh, the fund option exists as of now. Abhishek, is this more of a technical indicator and not fundamental? Does it also mean it is largely for investors who want to invest only for a short period of time? Necessarily, uh, I mean, uh, I would always suggest that not to uh, do it for a shorter term basis because trends are something which could change on a very uh, short notice and they could be, uh, I mean, held down to the wrong side of the trade. So if you have a longer term horizon, but you, uh, as Kavita mentioned some time back, you're looking to generate some alpha or, I mean, looking forward to a kind of a factor investing, then you can look for this, uh, I mean, investment uh, idea, uh, but not on a shorter term basis. Okay, all right. Uh, Kavita, what is your take here? Uh, you know, because when we say we are doing it basis stock prices going up, it is usually considered a technical indicator because that's when we are not talking about the fundamentals of a particular company. Is it more of that? And is it largely for an investor who wants to invest only for a short period of time? So very surprisingly, that's the notion that people have. But momentum strategy is... Honestly, it is just a way of investing for long-term investors to get alpha. That's it. Uh, in the short term, any kind of investment strategy carries all the risks of the market, right? And if I'm, I'm assuming that this show is meant for mutual fund investors who are typically long-term investors. So while the word sounds very technical, please understand that this is meant for long-term investors. It is a strategy. It's a factor that gives you better returns than the index underlying. Um, and the momentum investing tends to work better during bull markets and it tends to be an underperformer during bear markets. Okay, so if the market turns in while you are thinking it's a short term strategy and the market turns, you will be in for a very bad surprise. You could lose money much faster than the market loses uh, money. And uh, I don't recommend this is not a short term strategy at all. This is for long term investors who want to increase returns. Uh, by using factor investing, uh, using momentum as a factor for uh, improving alpha. That's it. Hmm. It's for long-term investors. Okay, that, that is an important clarification because as you said, in short term, things can actually go wrong and you don't know how wrong. At that time, you need that cover and long-term investing is what helps here. Um, uh, then Kavita, give us a sense of how is this momentum calculated? Are there some aspects that is considered for this kind of investing? Uh, so in a very transparent way, the uh, NSE has a method for, in, for including stocks in its momentum uh, index. Um, if, if, you, if, uh, if you look at Nifty uh, 200 Momentum 30, which is a very popular momentum fund, what it does is from the universe of Nifty's 200 top companies, it screens out 30 companies with the highest momentum score. This momentum score is calculated on the basis of last six months price performance uh, adjusted for volatility and also weightage is given to 12 months price movement adjusted for volatility. Now, based on these two factors, a score is given to the companies and they are then the, the companies with the maximum score make it to the top 30 and they make, a, make, make it to the uh, index. Every six months, this index is rebalanced. So supposing some a business has been in momentum and now it has suddenly lost momentum, it will automatically go out of the index in the next rebalancing, which happens every six months. Okay, all right, take that point. So these are some of the factors which are considered safe for NSC 200 Momentum 30. Abhishek, let me come to you. What are some of the technical indicators? You very helpfully mentioned some of them in your notes that you sent us. Can you explain that to us as well? Right, so take it, for, uh, take it from what uh, Tabitha mentioned so far. Uh, momentum is calculated using various simple uh, technical indicators such as rate of change uh, or simple moving average or momentum indicator. Uh, to more complex indicators such as exponential moving average or moving average conversion divergence or relative strength indicator. The basic aspect to this uh, is to observe trends in the uh, price change of an asset over a specific period of time. So like entry and exit strategy could be determined and that is what is uh, momentum uh, is calculated and then applied for, uh, let's say, investment decision. Hmm. Okay, so some of the, them, of course, are technical indicators, but again, to reiterate what our experts said, it is still for a longer term period, it is not for short term period that you would look at momentum investing. 
So Kavita, tell us, one has understood that, okay, this is what momentum investing is, this is how I can look at a particular index or particular uh, set of stocks. What should one consider before investing in momentum funds after they know that, yes, maybe this is the category that I would like to go for? So the first thing you have to look is what is your universe that you want to invest in. Uh, if you're going to be investing in large cap momentum, your risks are obviously different. And if you're going to invest in a small cap momentum uh, strategy, your risks are going to be different. So first, you must know your universe or your fund manager's universe or your passive funds universe. Okay, the risk comes from that universe. Market risk is a is a big part of your momentum strategy. Okay, so you first need to know what is the basic portfolio that you're going to invest in. The second thing is, is it going to be passive, passively managed like in an index fund? Or is it going to be actively managed? Like uh, Abhishek mentioned that there are two funds already in the mutual fund space that actively manage momentum. But there are several in the PMS space also who are handling momentum. Now, in a mutual fund structure, the tax implication is really only when you exit out of the strategy. However, if you're in a PMS structure, momentum does involve a lot of transactions. There's a lot of churn in the strategy because of the nature of the uh, investment. Now, every time there is buying and selling in the fund, capital gains will arise. Also, transaction costs are there. So your structure becomes very important. In a PMS, it is not a very efficient structure to run momentum because you're paying a lot more taxes in terms of capital gains. You will also end up paying a lot more in transaction costs. Hmm. And in that sense, mutual funds are a better structure. Hmm. Right? So this, these two aspects you must keep into, uh, in mind before you are uh, investing in momentum. That's very helpful, uh, Kavita, and makes uh, makes it more clear uh, in terms of what to think about or consider before you're investing in this category, which could be new for a lot of investors, right? But Abhishek, then would it come with a lot of risk in that case? And also, should a beginner not go for momentum investing? So to uh, compare it with what SEBI has in terms of risk, uh, riskometer scale, uh, these funds carry a high level of risk due to high volatility in returns of these funds. So, uh, I mean, a beginner is trying to make quick gains uh, due to fear of missing out, uh, should take a pause and understand the risk involved, uh, do their due diligence with these funds, and then decide how they want to go ahead with this uh, based on their risk appetite, only if they have a longer-term investment horizon. As we just spoke some time back, uh, doing it for a shorter period, period of time uh, is something which, which can, uh, I mean, quickly wipe out their gains or whatever potential they are looking at it. Hmm. Okay, Kavita, your take on this? So Sonal, I, I I shared with you also there is we had done, done an analysis uh, from 2005 of all uh, the the returns three year returns that have been given in momentum. Uh, I'm and specifically I'm going to talk about the Nifty uh, 200 momentum 30 index. Uh, we saw that this index has given superior returns per unit of risk. The sharp ratio is higher. Uh, in momentum strategy as compared to other strategies like value, quality, low volatility, etc. And they have also done better than flexi caps that were existing since 2005. We compared them with two of the long standing SI, uh, flexi cap funds that were there in that time. And it tends to has shown superior performance, but with higher amount of volatility. But this volatility is comparable to what the uh, managed funds were also having in their, uh, you know, in the in the same period. So if you're a long term investor and you want to improve returns, momentum is not a bad strategy to have. And if you want to contain your risk, the advisors generally guide people to have momentum as a part of a, uh, you know, if you have a core uh, a portfolio, this should be a satellite portfolio. And you combine momentum with, say, low volatility, because low volatility is on the other end of the spectrum of momentum. It does very well in bear markets, while momentum does very badly in bear markets. And in bull markets, momentum tends to do very well, while low volatility underperforms. So generally, we ask investors to have a combination of these two uh, and have it as a long-term strategy to improve returns and to reduce the risk in the portfolio. Okay, that makes sense. And always better to uh, do that asset allocation. Can't have all your eggs in the same basket, right? Uh, uh, we'll just do one thing. We'll uh, get into a quick break. But when we come back on the other side, we'll continue our discussion on momentum investing with Kavita and Abhishek. So stay tuned for that.
Welcome back. You're still tuned into MF Corner. We still have with us Kavita Menon and Abhishek to talk about momentum investing. Uh, well, you know, we spoke about what the basics are, um, how can one go about it, what are the possible risks associated with this as well. Abhishek, what have the typical returns been in momentum funds, uh, say versus index funds or other categories? So uh, we spoke some time back about the two active funds in this space. Uh, these funds track uh, Nifty 500 as total return index as benchmark, whereas rest of the 15 passive funds track five different indexes as benchmark, some of which uh, Kavita spoke about a few, few minutes back. Uh, as these are relative new funds and although re re uh, recent returns have been good, it's too soon to say whether these funds uh, would outperform on a longer term basis without considerable performance history. So I'll wait for uh, that thing to happen before I say that. Uh, but uh, as uh, Kavita mentioned that these uh, funds uh, focus on uh, factor investing and try to generate alpha. As the market has been doing good uh, in the past few periods, uh, the, the fund uh, have also performed reasonably well in this recent past. Okay, all right, take that point. Your uh, take, Kavita, you've also helpfully, uh, you have helpfully provided us some uh, details in terms of uh, different categories. Tell us more about it. So while the funds themselves are very new, uh, momentum investing is, uh, you know, as, as in the in the form of funds available to investors, uh, they are pretty new. But NSE did come up with the momentum index way back in 2005. So we took data from there and then tested that data over different market cycles. And we tested it uh, over three year rolling periods and we checked for uh, sharp ratios and standard deviations. And uh, we got some very exciting results Results. Momentum was the best performing category over the 19 year period that we did this this analysis for. Um, yeah, you have it on the screen here, right here. So you can see the performance. It's um, and in, it's it's more than the managed funds during that same period. HDFC FlexiCap and BlackRock FlexiCap were there in 2005. So we took data and compared. And uh, so, uh, but of course, if you don't want to put performance alone as the criteria, you would want to check risk as well. The uh, risk adjusted returns are also superior in the case of momentum. Um, thirdly, they do have more drawdowns. So when there are big crashes in the market, the momentum strategy tends to do worse than the market and the, the excessive correction can be as high as 20-25%. We saw that in 2008 and in 2020 as well. So you brace yourself for higher volatility if you're a fan of momentum. But if you are a long-term investor and you can stay through these uh, you know, ups and downs of the market, then you would uh, most likely end up with superior returns as compared to plain index investing. Hmm. Or even if you're lucky, even better than managed funds oh. in the similar category. As you can see, I mean, just see the table, HDFC Flexi Cap and DSP Flexi Cap have actually not uh, done better than the Momentum uh, 30 fund. Hmm. That makes sense. And as you said, it's always about the long term because that is when you have those cycles of ups and downs, right? But at the end, it is about the longer term return. But Kavita, does it mean that the costs are higher in momentum investing since we are talking so much uh, of technical indicators being used here? Uh, naturally, uh, so if it is an actively managed fund, there will be a lot more transactions. Transactions mean more costs. Uh, there's more buying selling, there is more brokerages to be paid, more custody fees, more uh, stamp duty. Uh, all those things do come in, right? And every time there are transactions, that leads to capital gain tax as well. So yes, if it is an active strategy and which is being done under, let's say, in your personal account, in your DMAT account, or you're running it in a PMS, you may end up paying a lot more taxes as well. Um, but uh, if it is in a mutual fund structure, then the taxation is not that much of a problem. You can uh, skip that part. Uh, passive index don't have carry so much cost because the rebalancing happens only once in six months. So it's really not the largest amount of churn that is there. Uh, but if you're looking at actively managed uh, momentum strategies, yes, the cost will be higher than a, a regular managed, um, fundamentally managed uh, mutual fund scheme hmm. of a similar nature. Okay. Uh, Abhishek, what are your uh, what is your take here? Similar take. Uh, so what we also found that index fund in this uh, category has generally higher expense uh, as compared to let's say Nifty 50 index fund. To give a comparison, let's say if uh, uh, let's say direct plan of a Nifty 50 index fund has a TR of let's say point uh, 10 basis point or 15 basis point, 
uh, correspondingly, um, I mean, uh, index fund in uh, momentum investing sp space, they have considerably higher uh, expense ratio to the tune of 45 basis point or even 50 basis point. So the cost factors are higher on this side. As Kavita mentioned, there are lots of transactions uh, to be done and uh, there are a lot of chance happens. So, uh, I mean, impact cost is higher in this. Uh, but that is a factor which, which, which should not be considered, in, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, separately and should be considered uh, compared to the kind of returns uh, that these funds provide over a period of time. Also, I believe that over a period of time, once these funds, uh, uh, I mean, achieve a decent uh, EM size due to, uh, I mean, that and economies of scale, the expense ratio would come down, uh, I mean, over a period of time. Hmm. Okay. So, Abhishek, is this a concept that has started picking up now or has it been in practice for a long time? And which are the, mutu uh, which are the mutual funds that you've all already answered? They offer this kind of investing, but what are some of the popular stocks that they have as their holdings? Sure. So, in India, it's a, it's a recent phenomenon, but these ones have been in existence in other developed markets such as USA for a while now. Uh, I mean, uh, Kavita mentioned about that uh, NIF I mean, NSC as an index had, had this for a while. Uh, but the funds were launched recently. So there are 17 odd funds, as I mentioned some time back, which offers momentum investing as a strategy. The index fund in this uh, category invest uh, uh, based on the benchmark it tracks and active fund in this invest based on their own research. So to give a comparison about one of the active fund, which is Quant Active Fund, the majority of the holding of this uh, particular active fund is in Reliance Industries, HDFC Bank, Tata Power, IRCTC and Container Corporation. Uh, which considered almost 30 or 35 odd percent of their holding currently. Uh, likewise, uh, for the Sampo, uh, they should be similar, but the kind of stocks they might hold, they would be different because they would be tracking different set of momentum uh, stocks. Hmm. Right, of course, it'll be different for different funds. And Kavita has also helpfully shared uh, the holding of Nifty 200 Momentum 30, which has HL, Trend, there's Bajaj Auto, Bharat Electronics, to name a few. And the Nifty Midcap 150 Momentum uh, 50 has PFC, HDFC, AMC, Hindustan Zing, there's Oracle Financials, Page Industries, Persistent Systems, NMDC, to name a few here as well. So thank you for that, Kavita. But uh, we would have liked to chat a little more on this investing. There's so much interest here, but we have run out of time. So I would like to thank my guest for joining us today and explaining this to us and making it easier for our viewers as well. With that, we'll uh, take your leave on MF Corner today. Stay tuned for Closing Bell to take you through the last hour of trade.